This lot on West Bonanza sits vacant, run down, but there was a time when it was a place of beauty and wonder, a place that made history. This is where the legendary Moulin Rouge sat. It was the only integrated hotel casino in Las Vegas and the country. There was no such thing at that time when I was born in the ballet had just started, but not with black people. The Rouge, as former employees call it, was created by several white businessmen. It's the Moulin Rouge way over here. They spent $3.5 million to build the property. Former dancer Anna Bailey says the Moulin Rouge was a mystery. We didn't realize until we got and we started riding, it was getting darker and darker. And we said, well, where are we going? And then we went through the underpass where everybody just looked at each other and our face dropped. But then when we saw the Moulin Rouge, we were elated. We were just thrilled because it was really beautiful. Even the ownership was integrated. Heavyweight boxing champion Joe Lewis had a small ownership stake. He served as a greeter at the front door. You see the Moulin Rouge here? Staffing at the Moulin Rouge was also integrated from the cooks, bartenders, and cigarette girls. Which made it um, just fabulous that you see everybody coming in and, and mixing and, and, and uh, dancing together or eating together. And, and even our um, captains and waiters, they were, they were hand-picked. Housing was taken care of for the employees. The owners built regal estates in Berkeley Square, the historic black housing development on the west side. Opening night was May 24th, 1955. A line wrapped outside of the property. Yeah. The who's who of Las Vegas showed up that night. Every night was like opening night there because it was just so jam-packed that the crowds would go all the way out the door. The bar was packed with beautiful couples. The showroom was alive with music and acts. More than two dozen dancers amazed the audience with acrobatics, something the city hadn't seen. Bailey reminisces on a popular dance number. It was, uh, it was just really just a big hit. I just can't believe it. We did a can-can number. They were doing it at the Tropicana, but, but we blew it out. Big names like Frank Sinatra, Lena Horne, and even the mayor dropped in to see the excitement. I was happiest to meet Nat King Cole. That's who I was the happiest yeah, to meet. Yeah. And I met him and I don't, I, I just melted. He always, oh, hello, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and I just acted so silly. Yeah. The Moulin Rouge sold out three shows each night until that untimely moment in history. Because we walked in, um, there was a padlock on the door. No, nobody warned us or anything. Mm -hmm. Our costumes are, were still mm -hmm. hanging up. Mm -hmm. And I went back about two or three months later, and our costumes were still in the dressing room. After a short but That's vibrant me. six months, the Moulin Rouge was closed. The dancers have their own theories on why the doors were shut. The Moulin Rouge closed and summing it up, there never was a payment made. But I really deep, feel deep in my heart that, um, that they just took the money and ran because I heard no bills were paid there. And I think, I, hate to, I think the mafia had a little something to do about it. One of the first black female card dealers, Sarah Ann Knight Preddy, along with her husband, worked to restore the hotel in 1957. They were unsuccessful and were forced to sell the hotel to a developer. And we were just so upset, yeah. you know, because we thought we were going to be in here for yeah. years. Still, the Rouge stood proud. It served as a motel, then public housing, then became a vacant property for squatters. Multiple fires forced the property to be bulldozed. In 2009, its famous neon sign was shipped to the boneyard inside the Neon Museum. Former dancer Dee Dee Jasmine worked oh, to have the landmark uh, placed Albany. on the National Register of Historic Places. But I um, was so happy to just be involved, you know, and out of, out of state. The Smithsonian also holds information on the Moulin Rouge. 
even decades later, former staff members long to see it rise again. Maybe without thoughts and maybe with Channel 13 helping us, maybe somebody will, will think about building a hotel over there again and, and, and name it Moulin Rouge again. Mm -hmm.